Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Stocks from Scratch. My name is Brian Feroli. I'm joined, as always, by Brian Stoffel. Brian, how's it going? Not bad. Awesome. Well, we every week I put a poll up on Twitter asking my followers, who should we cover this week on Stocks from Scratch? The winner this week, Coupang, ticker symbol CPNG. As a reminder, this is a company that Brian and I have never researched before. The point of the next hour or so will be to show you how we would go about researching a company in real time. This is meant to be educational, to show you how we think about investing. This is not meant to be advice. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. So do your own research. Neither Brian or I are experts in Coupang. In fact, Brian, do you know anything about Coupang? I know one thing, and that is it has been compared to the Amazon of South Korea. That's that it. is that is my one thing that I was bringing here too. I know that a lot of people are interested in this company, and that it has been also called the the uh, the Amazon of South Korea. Uh, so with that, uh, we are going to take this and go through my checklist uh, from scratch. So let's get started. Okay, here we go. Here's my search engine and Coupang Ang. Investor relations. There they are. And okay, coupang. Colorful. Colorful. How did I ever live without coupang? I you know what? I'll admit during the during the pandemic I said that about Amazon. How did I ever live without Amazon? Yeah. You kidding <laughs> I me? I think a lot of people said that. Okay. Coupang. I'm assuming we're pronouncing that right, is reimagining the commerce experience with the goal of wowing each customer from the instant they opened the Coupang app to the moment an order is delivered to their door. I really hope that's not their mission statement. <laughs> Powered by a dynamic end-to-end -end e commerce and logistics network. Okay, so there's a logistics network and a culture of customer centricity. Coupang has broken trade offs around speed, selection, and price. Today, we provide exceedingly fast shipping on millions of items, including fresh groceries delivered within hours nationwide, 365 days per year. Huh. Okay. You know, that's interesting. I've been, the more I read about some of these companies, groceries is a big thing. And it's just funny because I feel like it's not here. Yes. And, yeah, I can I can see that being a lot easier to do when you're operating in a country that is geographically the size of South Korea. Uh, much harder to do when the geography is the size yes. of China or America Africa. or India. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's a that's a good thing. Uh, so cool to do. Yeah, like, I, I didn't do del grocery deliveries uh, myself. I still haven't done that. Although I know some people that made the switch and they really like it. So maybe I'm just uh, old fashioned. Okay, we kind of, so it's delivered right to your door. We have an end-to-end -end e commerce and logistic network. Okay, we kind of read all that. For millions of consumers in Korea, home to one of the largest and fastest growing e commerce opportunities anywhere in the world. We strive for the best customer experience on earth. Hey, that sounds very familiar. Does that sound familiar to you? Amazon? Yeah, to be Earth's most customer centric company. Okay. Uh, same day delivery, dawn delivery, coupang fresh. Everything we do is built around the lives of our customers, and we work hard to ensure speed, convenience, choice, and value. Order millions of items before midnight. Wow. What? Arriving before 7 a.m. the next day. Yeah, that's oh my crazy. Goodness, that's bananas. Zero packaging. Get what you need without packaging. We've eliminated cardboard boxes and over 75% of our parcels. Interesting. Wow. Frictionless returns. No boxes, no labels, no postage. Just tap a button and leave the items outside your door. Oh man, they're totally beating Amazon at this game. I mean, I, I understand they're working off of a much smaller geography. Yep. Improve the customer experience. We've invested heavily in infrastructure and technology. A hundred unique fulfillment centers, 25 million square feet. 70% of the Korean population live within seven miles. Good Lord. How big is South Korea? 
Geographically, it can't be that big. I'm guessing it's the size of Virginia. Okay. Maybe bigger, though. That's a guess. We combine this physical infrastructure with cutting edge systems and software. We're able to use AI and machine learning to predict demand spikes before they happen and forward deploy products into our fulfillment and delivery networks before they are needed. We then leverage our technology to dynamically route hundreds of millions of orders efficiently. This enables us to break those conventional customer trade-offs. Our culture, Culpang's thriving core business is a launch pad for new products and services that we run as startups inside Coupang. That it's sounds like the, optionality. It's about the size of Indiana. All right, so I was close. Yep. Our team is able to rapidly develop, test, and optimize a new product or customer experience. Hmm. Then we use the density of our network to efficiently and the efficiency of our infrastructure to catapult it to growth and scale, creating efficiencies that we pass on to our customers in the form of low prices. Yeah, that's a barbell method. Yep. We're a technology team at core with over 1,600 high quality tech employees who make up a third of our workforce. We have engineer. We have world-class engineers building from us within Seattle, Mountain View, Shanghai, and Beijing, and Singapore. Hmm. So they have engineers from all over the world. Okay. Leadership. Bang Suk Kim, mm -hmm. CEO and chairman. Let's learn about him. Founded our company. Has served as our CEO and a member of our board since May of 2010. So this is only 11 years old. He was at Harvard, an AB degree in government. We believe he's qualified to serve as a member of our board. Okay. CFO since December of 2020. Before that, chief operating officer, chief of, chief of staff to our CEO. We worked at Amazon. And Flipkart. Interesting. Okay. Business manager. Chief Technology Officer. Okay. Uh, investor Relations. Well, we already clicked on that. Uh, let's see if we can get stock info. Financials, SEC filing. So this company just went public recently. So 424B4. So 424B4. Um, I wonder if they have a presentation. I didn't see it. Didn't see it. Sometimes it's in events, news, first quarter, pricing of their IPO. Okay, so they priced at 35. Uh, CPNG, what's the stock at right now? Priced at 35. Hmm. 31. So it's down a little. Uh, $54 billion company. Holy moly, that's... That's that bigger than I was expecting. Okay. Bigger than, than you were expecting. Okay. I'm going to zoom in because I was told last time that this is way too small. I'll do my best to make it uh, bigger. Okay. So they IPO'd at 35. They raised $4.5 They were taken public by Deutsche Bank, UBS, HSBC, et cetera. Okay. Coupang. We are building the future of commerce. Pictures, growth at scale, revenue, forexed. Oh man, that's by quarter. Twenty since 2018. 0.9 billion to and it accelerated. No, that's that's a chart crime. That 52 should not be above 59. <laughs> no, no, no. They're that's, just, total, that's total revenue. Yeah, yeah, that's revenue, but that's the growth rate. Yes, okay. Just want to make sure that that was... I but mean, it did accelerate. It did accelerate. Which yeah. isn't that surprising, given the last year. Still impressive. Still impressive. So 93% revenue growth. Okay. We want our customers to have it all. Brian, can you see that? Okay. Uh, it's a little bit grainy. It's, well, that's, that's the file. There you go. That's file. better. Our a mission... Letter, our, uh, aha. We wonder, we want all our customers to have it all. Why force customers to choose between amazing services, low prices, and selection? Our mission is to create a world where customers wonder, 
how did I ever live without Coupang? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> also, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it there. Yep. You know. Uh, we strive to eliminate the conventional trade-offs in the customer experience. What does this mean in practice? It's nighttime and yeah, yeah. You get, you want strawberries tomorrow. You can get them. Uh, that's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, hats off to in nine years, uh, no, 11 years, 11 years. They can offer a few hour delivery. And I mean, this is a big thing for me. I don't know about you, but especially during the pandemic, we would get things like, especially clothes for our kids that we would want to return and returning. Amazon has done what they can to make it easier, but it's still a pain in the butt. It is. If I could just put it on the bench outside my front door and that's it, I don't think I would shop anywhere else ever. I, 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 a hundred percent. I mean, I already pretty much don't shop anywhere else anyway, but if I could, <laughs> the Amazon truck is in my neighborhood every single day. Like yeah. why, why can't I just give it to them? Why can't right? I say, why can't I have a box on my doorstep that just says return Amazon returns and just throw it in there. They should just start putting boxes, the Amazon return box in people's like replace the mail, the mailbox. It's just the Amazon return box. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so coupons, earliest delivers. We set out to deliver wow experiences. We choose to up and, yeah, so we transform. Our first decision was to build an end-to-end -end logistics network powered by the latest technologies. Uh, the lack of existing fulfillment capacity and the limitations of third-party logistics in the market forced us to build our own from scratch. Oh, that's the best. When you are your first customer, that's the best kind of business. It was an immensely difficult effort that required significant investments of time and capital. I bet it did. Uh, now we can do, but but we can now do what nobody else believes in our market can guarantee one day delivery on all rocket orders without reducing our selection or charging for delivery. <laughs> Free multi-hour. Wow. Hey, let's say this. They've got the wow factor working as far as you and I are concerned. Yes. You want to move to South Korea? And maybe. <laughs> no, I want Amazon to do this. <laughs> uh, even after producing millions of products delivered by Dawn, even after producing one-day delivery, our customers who came home late from work weren't actually getting one-day experience. Yep, so Dawn and same day, reducing delivery times to a matter of hours so customers could get their items when they needed it. How much have we really improved our customers' lives if they still had to drive to the store to buy something as simple as milk? So we launched Rocket Fresh. Now the so, Brian, I know that their mission statement is eh, but if they're asking themselves how much did we really improve our customers' lives if yeah. they still had to drive to the store, that is, it's that, simple. It's yes. simple. That's a really right? that, that's first principles thinking. That that is asking themselves. I agree. Yeah. So that's simple. That, I just mean that like they they know how to make a decision. Like yes. is this gonna make it so that people wondered how they ever lived without it? Yes. So I I think this company could be more that is a hint this company is more mission driven than their language would and we would would uh would indicate. Okay. Yes. Effortless returns. If online shopping for more and more categories of items is so convenient, why couldn't returns be as well? Wow. No repackaging, no labels, no post office trips required. What? Deliveries without packaging. Order volumes increased massively, but we couldn't help notice the cardboard packaging piling up. Could we provide convenience without associated packaging? We found a way. Yes, that is such a pain in the butt for me too. I mean, I don't know about you, Brian. I know you love fires. I just use those as my fire starters in the backyard. Uh, that's my pizza boxes. I use those for that. Oh, that's good because that grease will get going. And you can't recycle them because they're yep. the grease. Uh, we control the entire shipping experience and sortable process for and Our tech and operations team devise a way to minimize protective cardboard packaging. Wow. We have eliminated packaging and cardboard boxes in more than 75% of our shipments. Okay, we didn't stop there. We introduced eco bags for fresh, completely reusable bags that replace virtually all additional disposable packaging. They're picked up by the delivery network. For I guess so. Time. I guess so. Wow. Improving the lives of our customers, employees, and merchants. That so they're is mostly third party. 
That is some capital. Uh, that is um, some conscious capitalism right there. We believe it is both our opportunity and responsibility to challenge expectations about important social issues. In the market, where industry standard is a six-day work week. We were the you know, first. That is, to that's one thing I was going to say is South Korea's their their culture is is unique in that they. I, I'm not surprised that not having the time to go do these things from what I've read, I obviously have no real life experience. I'm not surprised that this is a premium. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can Did I, did that make it a little better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the mid market, in the market with the industry standards, a six day work week, we were the first to establish a five day work week. Hey. Even as we became the first major service to provide deliveries to customers seven days a week, we also hire our drivers, coupang friends, <laughs> <laughs> directly and provide them with paid off, paid time off and full benefits. The vast majority of drivers in the industry receive neither. Additionally, we are planning to grant 100 billion W something or, or approximately 90 million dollars of restricted stock awards to our frontline workers and non-manager employees. Wow. We believe we are the first company in Korea to make our frontline employees stockholders. I Jeff, like are you reading this? I, I like this guy. <laughs> I like this uh, guy. Uh, we hope such example demonstrate that innovation can unlock both a better world for our customers and a better workplace for our employees. We want to inspire others to follow. We support hundreds of thousands of suppliers. 70% of our merchants are small businesses with under 3 million in revenue per Interesting. year. Interesting. Okay. So this is a really, a, it's almost like a platform for small businesses, much in the same way that Amazon is. I would, yeah. And I would say in a way, kind of like Shopify, if they had a marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even during an unprecedented pandemic, our small businesses in the country suffered small business and coupang saw their sales increase 50%. I mean, Yes. As the third largest employer in Korea. Wow. Korea's got like Hyundai and um, Samsung. Is not is Kia from South Korea too? Yes, I think so. We are committed to investing in good jobs. The number one private sector job creator. Okay, we're building uh, 50,000 new jobs in South Korea by 2025. More infrastructure. The spirit of our company can be found in the most audacious decision. First, Building our own network of technology and logistics infrastructure, the guiding principle of our decisions has never wavered. We started our companies. We start from our customers' biggest needs and find ways to deliver the wow. What oh boy! Look at how he ends this. How did we ever live without Coupang? He goes right back to that mission statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I like this great way letter more than I thought I was going to. Okay, our mission. They do say it right up top. Mm -hmm. To create a world where customers wonder, how did I ever live without Compang? I don't really like it. I like the spirit of it, but I don't yeah. like the wording that is used. Agreed. Um, but I, I, I get the sense from that letter and what the company has done that they, they believe it. So it's if, not if, simple. It's not simple, but I think it's inspirational and optionable. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. Overview. We're building the next generation experience for e-commerce. We believe that by investing in technology infrastructure, yep. Historically online shopping forced capers to accept various compromises. Yep. You've taken care of that. We set out to address trade-offs, dawn and same day delivery, next day or fast deliveries for nearly 100% of order, even the day before Christmas. Or Korean Thanksgiving. We have the fastest delivery service compared to our other e-commerce players in Korea. And that is from Euro Monitoring. Okay. Okay. Huh. Uh, last order by midnight. Comp customers are promised free next day delivery. Placed any time of day. Even seconds before midnight. Vast selection of millions of items. From tomatoes to TVs. Low prices, boxless packaging, frictionless returns, and 70% of the population lives close. Really close. Awesome. Uh, we have the largest directly employed delivery fleet in the country, 15,000 full-time drivers. Uh, our technology leverages machine learning to anticipate demand. Uh, Walmart's been doing that for decades, so that's not that impressive, but 
I mean, it's still good. Dynamic orchestration, uh, upstream optimization for last mile efficiency. For example, many packages arrive pre-sorted in truck-ready containers for assigned trucks, making the loading process efficient mm. and simple. Cool. They're focused on efficiency, as they should be. Extended our network to offer further improvements. We launched Rocket Wow membership program for a flat monthly fee. Is that the Dawn delivery? Because they said it was like a rocket. It began by offering free nationwide shipping for millions of products with no minimum spend. So it's prime. Yeah. Millions of members offer it free unlimited returns for 30 days and rocket fresh groceries has grown to become the leading nationwide online grocer. What? Online, online, online grocer. I mean, still impressive. Yeah. But it was launched in, no, wait, when was Rocket Fresh launched? 19. That was Rocket Wow. Well, so that was even probably more recent. We also launched Coupang Eats, the largest online food delivery service in Korea. Coupang Eats leverages in part the technology and infrastructure that we built for rocket delivery. We believe the success of programs like Rocket Fresh and Coupang Eats demonstrate the power of our network to extend new offerings to our loyal customers. That's some optionality, Brian. Mm -hmm. Into entirely new, new categories. Not just, not just the same categories, new categories. As our business model delivers significant operating leverage, we, intest to, we intend to reinvest cash flow generated from our business into new innovations that will delight our customers over the long term. Even if these return on investments is not realized in the short term. Long-term thinking. We offer merchants of all sizes effective solutions, our customer to product matching technology, and just millions of new merchant listings daily in our product knowledge graphs and leverages machine learnings provide personalized product exposure to customers. That's not all that special. Uh, but anyway, I mean, you kind of have to do that. Right. Right. Since 2013, we have invested billions of dollars into our inventory-owned selection, proprietary technology, and the largest business-to-consumer logistics food footprint as compared to other delivery products. 100 fulfillment and logistics centers in 30 cities. cities. Yep. Today, Coupang is the largest product e-commerce player in Korea. Coupang remains a small percentage of the total retail, grocery, and consumer service, food service, and travel spend. Travel spend? Yeah, why was That's, that in there? Well, that might just be a clue as to where they think they might go. Yeah, which was $470 billion in 2019 and expected to go to $513 billion in 2024. The e-commerce spending was $128. We believe Coupa, the response of our customers to our offerings has translated into rapid growth. Our total net revenues were $12 billion, up 90%. So $12 billion, and the entire category was $128 billion. So they got 10%. And, and, and then that, that category is growing. Okay. Our gross profit was $2 billion. So $12 billion in sales, $2 billion in gross profit. So this is a low-margin business, 18, 18 percentage gross uh, gross margin operating loss was half a billion, which was lower than the year ago period. Operating margin was negative. Our cash provided by pro what our cash provided by operating activities was 0.3 billion. Our free cash flow was negative 2 billion. 0.2. Right. Neg negative 0.2 billion. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So they are not, they are not profitable, but they're getting closer. They're right there on free cash flow. Yeah, they're getting closer on the free cash flow. Okay. Our opportunity. Korea is the fourth largest economy in Asia and the 12th largest globally. GDP of 1.6 trillion. GDP per capita of 32,000. Total spending was 470 billion. Korea is home to one of the fastest growing e-commerce opportunities in the world. Total e-commerce spend was 128 billion. Yeah, that's growing. Implying a CAGR of 10%. Spending per person is going to grow from 2,600 to 4,300. The, uh, the key attributes with Korea's high online growth are high mobile penetration. I know it's a very tech-savvy culture. 
uh, retail competitive landscape and lifestyle. Okay. Uh, existing and new entrants must appreciate Korea's demanding consumer preferences. Yep. Value. We wow customers. I would say wow if I could yeah. just take my thing to my front drawer and say, take this away, Amazon. Uh, how we serve merchants. We've expanded our merchant space over time. Uh, we have technology. We are the largest B2C footprint. Yep. Last mile delivery, diversified supply chain, uh, sustainability. Yeah, this is a very sustainably focused company. Can you imagine trying to go in and offer something better? Like, no. <laughs> what what yeah, would no, you do? So these things matter. Look at that. Oh, uh, look at this. Our strengths, the first thing they list, our culture. Mm -hmm. Scale ex economies of scale, growing customer base, scalability, nationwide footprint, uh, attract more customers, increase engagement, further expand our selection, explore new initiatives, or broaden our offerings. I mean, it's pretty clear travels, th they're going to do something in travel. Yes, if they're, if they're not already. Right. Okay, so they'll have... 1.7 billion shares. Yep, we already saw they were a big company. Use of proceeds. Uh, we intend to use proceeds to general corporate purposes, working capital, operating expenses, and capital expenditures. We may use a portion of the proceeds for acquisitions of technologies. Okay. So that's what they're going to be doing with the proceeds. Yada, yada. Okay, here we go. Here are the numbers. 3 billion to 5.8 billion to 11 billion. Thought it was twelve. Uh, other revenue. Ah, there we go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is retail. Okay, this is retail sales. Other revenue. This must be their their Wow program. Oh, uh, like like the the membership. Yeah. Oh no, that was launched in twenty nineteen. So this must be. Well, we'll figure that out. Yeah. That, that that but that's to me what that is. That this is their other businesses that are that are growing. Do you think that might be like logistics, like third like fulfillment for third party stuff? I don't I don't think so. I didn't see anything about that in the shareholder letter. Yeah, I didn't like either. That, but it could be. Um. So okay. So costs are scaling appropriately. They're losing money, but they were losing a billion. Now they're losing half a billion. So that's trailing in the in the correct direction. Okay, uh, balance sheet. So this is pro forma, meaning after the IPO, although we do have a quarterly report that they just reported. Uh, so 4.6 billion in cash, long-term debt, 353 million. So they have more than 10X the number of cash that they do uh, debt. Total convertible notes got taken care of. Common stock, okay, so Clean balance sheet. Yeah. Um, risks. Uh, nothing we just said is going to continue anymore. You can probably just probably simplify it. Uh, we lose money. We experience fluctuations in our operations. Unable to accurately forecast our revenue. Uh, Brian, while I'm doing this, could you look up to see if they have anything on Glassdoor or any yep. sort of employee rating that we can check for? You bet. Okay. Uh, our culture has been critical. Our culture has been critical to our success, and we cannot maintain its culture if we grow. Has been critical to our success. I like that they call that out. I do too, because it's something that I always think about. <laughs> That's kudos for calling that out as a as a risk that uh, as we grow um we operate in a highly competitive industry the industry operating is intensely competitive yeah we face competitive pressures online and offline um competitors may be able to put more resources and devote more shopping menus okay some of our competitors control other products and services that are important to our success including Credit card interchange, internet search, and mobile operating systems. Okay. They don't call out their customers, competitors by name, um, but they do say that that could be one. Uh, we're, we are subject to risks associated with sourcing our manufacturing goods outside of Korea. Yep. You have, you have, a, you have a trade war. That yeah. wouldn't be good, but that would also harm all your competitors too. 
if we're unable to innovate, if we fail to retain supplier relationships, efforts to increase advertising, inventory risk. Yeah, inventory risk, especially if you're selling fresh fruit that can uh, go bad. We may expand into other countries. We hmm. may expand into other countries, which would prevent challenges as well as opportunities. Yeah, you're going to have a hard time doing that if your model is built around blanketing the country with things and then offering them services that no other country the company can. If mobile solutions, okay, okay, yeah, outages. I mean, all the standard stuff. Uh, we rely on what was that one? We rely on our merchants to provide the fulfillment experience, failure by our suppliers, changes to our customer satisfaction. If our app doesn't work. Yeah, all the usual risks of investing in any, any business. Did you find anything on Glassdoor? So I did. Here's what I found. Uh, it's got 3.9 stars, 82% approval, 73% would recommend to a friend, but... And I've been going through Glassdoor for years now. So I, I, I feel like I know where to check the butt. There's 192 reviews. And if I'm counting correctly, I don't know about you, but Glassdoor's webpage is totally finicky for me these days. Um, almost all of those reviews are since January of this year. Hmm. Of this and year? Of this year. So the last four months? Yes which just so happens to correlate with when the company went public. Yeah. Which is, it's, I, I don't blame them, but I don't see it as a high value signal when I get the feeling that this is a push from HR to say, hey, go on and, and tell people. There was a lot of reviews that talked about how, not a lot, but the word toxic culture came up more than a couple times. Um, and I... Again, I've I've never lived or worked in South Korea, so so I don't know. But uh, I mean, the pace uh, I could see how that would could, could be very difficult. I mean, if six days a week is the norm, and going down to five days a week is a big deal, um, so uh, it, it's not much of a data point. Let me put it that way. Okay. And the other thing I'll point out about them is how that, that that's, that's a huge limitation of when you're researching international uh, companies yes. is, is, is Glassdoor useful in South Korea? I don't know. I, yeah. I, I can't imagine that it is to be, to be honest, but this company does say that it has employees in Mountain View and Seattle. Right. And I could imagine that those employees are the ones that are, are, are going on there. Um, so yeah, something to, uh, to keep in mind. I'm curious, did you, while I was looking at that, did you see what the inside ownership was? Uh, I haven't gotten to that yet. Okay. But we'll, we, will, uh, we will get to that. Uh, so let me go back to sharing my, my screen. Okay, so got some key bi business metrics. Oh, so this is interesting. active customers. So customers went from 9 million to 11.7 to 14.8. So 14.8 million active customers. Can you look up the population of South Korea? I had already started doing that. <laughs> Population of South Korea, uh, according to Worldometer, is 51 million. Wow! So they've all right. So they've got 14, and you've got a you've got a guess that of that 51, you've got to take out you know everyone under 15 years old. So I mean, they could be approaching yeah 30 how, or 40 percent. How big is that number? How how big is that number going to go? I don't know. There, there's room for growth because I'm sure. sure what's Amazon's penetration rate in the U S probably 60% might be higher. Yeah. Okay. Uh, net revenues per active customer, 127, 161, 256. And remember the average wallet in South Korea was 2,400 on its way to 4,300. So they're growing that free cash flow is negative and was only only negative 182 million. They are right on the cusp of that. Oh, yep. There's another thing. Currency is going to be a, a factor with this company. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. growth retention. Active customers grew. Yeah, active customers are growing. That's good. And revenue per active customer is growing. 
Uh, that's good. Uh, the growth reflects the success of Rocket Delivery, Rocket Wow, Rocket Fresh, Coupang Eats. One of the long-term drivers is growth retention and engagement. We offer members Rocket Wow memberships unlimited shipping with no minimum spend, free returns, expedited shipment, and exclusive discounts. <sighs> Boy, how do you compete with that? You can't. <laughs> you just can't. That's over four times. Okay, for the quarter ending, the frequency of purchases by Rocket Wow members was four times that of non-active members. Yeah, so you want people to become Rocket Wow members. I mean, that's a, like Prime, right? Like exactly the same thing. Back when it was a thing, they would say that Prime members ordered twice as much stuff. Yeah. Cohorts consistently increased their spend. The 2017 cohort increased its spend by 246% in 2020. The longer you're a customer, the more you spend. Mm. Okay, that's a nice pretty graphic. Oh, that is very interesting. Look at uh, the last three years, they've almost doubled at the end of the next year. So this company is doing a fabulous job at getting new customers, but more importantly, getting its existing customers to spend more. Fabulous job. Total customer spend from new customers and existing customers total. Existing customers are 90% of the total. So new, any, in any given year, new customers are only 10% of growth in 2020. Okay, uh, selection and category. New offerings, Rocket Fresh, Coupang Eats, uh, operate, operating leverage in our business model. Well, it, there's going to be some serious operating leverage in this thing once it turns net income positive. Yes. They're going to be able to crank out tons of profits given the, how, low, uh, how, how low margin it is or how high their fixed costs are. Uh, forgive me. Okay, net income, sales were up, other net revenue. Yep, we saw this. Growth was high. Uh, one thing I don't know is how how volatile is uh, South Korea's currency when compared to the U.S. You know what? Wait, can you go back just a second because the, it explained what that other revenue was. Did it? Okay, yes. did I skip right by that? Uh, yeah, net other revenue. Does it say what it is? It doesn't tell us. Yeah, I. Ah. Driven by an increase in merchants on our marketplace, merchants in our marketplace and Reddit offering. So, oh, that that must be um, if you want to become a merchant, you probably have to pay them fees, just the same okay. way storage and logistics fees are paid. That makes sense. Sure, or maybe even like advertising. Yeah. Um, if they don't, that could be one for them in the future. Okay, so all this is growing. Yep, tons of tons of numbers. Numbers, numbers, numbers. They have plenty of liquidity. Okay. Uh, yep, payment due, interest rate risk. Okay, let me just do some quick searches. We got most of it, but I'm going to do ownership, concentration of ownership. Once the software is completed, the owners of our Class B common stock will own 10% of our outstanding shares and control 76% of the voting power of the company. But still, so there, over 10%. There are super, super voting shares. Um, and I guess they're owned by the founder. But we haven't found that yet. Principal and selling stockholders. Here we go. All right, boy, this is really small. You'll just, yeah, you'll just need to okay. read that for us. Bomb, Bomb Suk Kim, he is the CEO. He owns 176 million Class B shares. That is, he owns 100% of the Class B shares. Okay. So that's 10% of the company. 11% uh, of the company. Uh, he, he's the only one that owns Class B. Insiders as a group own 28%. Wow. So there's a couple other guys on here. Nell, Mata, Matthew Christensen, he owns 6%. Um, yeah, okay. So inside ownership is high. One last thing we like to look for is the word concentration. I can't okay. imagine this would be a big problem for them. I can't imagine. Uh, financial institutions, 89% of our cash is at five financial institutions. The company's gross account receivable, 3 payment gateway companies 
I mean, that's like 50, Visa, MasterCard. Right, exactly. Yeah. Credit risk, we place cash with financials. Okay. Yeah, so no, no customer concentration risk. Okay. I'm well, ready. Thank you. Thank you for everybody for, for sitting through that with us. Uh, it's time to actually start filling out our checklist. Uh, one other thing I want to do, because this is a part of my system, I like to see, um, don't have it yet. I was going to check to see Coupang just reported. I want to see how they did when oh, compared yeah. to their results. Uh, but I, uh, Anna, that's not available as of yet. Uh, the company's too new to have uh, analyst estimates, uh, so that's not going to be useful here. But uh, anyway, here we go. Let's let's get back to that so we can actually start filling in the checklists. Brian, let's do your first this time. Sure. Okay. So CPNG up first mission statement. This can range from negative one to two. I give them a point and a half. Okay, one point five. Love the spirit. Just and you know it kind of does capture it. But I don't know. Uh, we've we've been through ones that are better. Um, all right. So the moat. This one is this one is where you really dig in. So first, I give them two points for low cost production. Why? Because the ability to deliver things by dawn when you order it at 11 p.m. requires enormous investments. And so, what's the low cost? It's the low internal cost of deliver getting something from point A to point B for someone. That's huge. I don't know how you're going to beat that or have a better service than what they're offering right now. Uh, I believe that there are network effects in terms of drawing in merchants, which draws in more customers. I don't think that's the strongest one ever. So I'll give them a point for that. And honestly, we didn't see anything in here about brand value. But look, after this, you and I are both considering moving to South Korea. So I'm going to give them a point for brand. For optionality, I'm going to give them two and a half points. Um, I'm curious about all that talk about travel. But look, they went from retail to groceries. And then they went from retail and groceries to also including restaurants. And I'm sure that there's more that they can work on. Yeah, they've already hinted at tr travel. They haven't said what right, they're doing. Exactly. But uh, Or maybe we just didn't find that yet. Um, but that's that once you have the app and once you have the customers, there's lots of things you can do. It's just a matter of, are you doing them? Right. This company's exactly. doing them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Um, so that's so a really good start. So one and a half. It's points. a great start. Moat is uh, four points. So you did two for network, two for switching costs, low cost. Excuse me, two for low cost, one for network, network. effect, one for brand. Optionality yep. is two and a half out of five. Okay. Uh, financial fortitude. So cash, debt, free cash flow. So I give them a half point here, and it's gonna get it's gonna get more when they have positive free cash flow. And this isn't a weakness. If it was a weakness, you could take you could take points off. But um, they've got uh, what I believe is four point five billion uh, of cash? and about three hundred billion three hundred million in debt. They yep. they have a strong balance sheet. They're just not free cash flow positive, honestly. And if you're doing this at home and you think that deserves a one, give it a one. Uh, concentration. And the other thing I'll say is compared, their free cash flow was negative 200 million last right. year, and they now have four and a half billion in cash. Right. So they can they have plenty of capital to continue to invest in themselves. I mean, truth be told, you could easily argue that that should be a one. Uh, for concentration, zero. That's good. That's the best score That's you can good. get. Mm -hmm. They don't have any customer concentration risk. They do have payment concentration a risk with Visa, MasterCard, but that's minimal. Visa, MasterCard aren't going to shoot themselves in the foot. That's that's what they'd be yep. doing. Uh, Glassdoor, give them a zero. Okay, zero. Um, it might be a fantastic place to work. Like it, that, that might, we might be underscoring it there because yes. we, we don't have a good resource to say, yes, here are some clear data points that say this is a great place to work other than Glassdoor, which we said before. Do we care what, I mean, this is a South Korean company. Do we care what the people that work in tech in, in, in Mountain View think of, think of the culture? It's a completely different culture than the culture of the right. company. Um, so we could be underscoring that. Uh, but I, I agree with giving to zero. Uh, founder is the CEO. He's involved. And insiders own a ton of it. So I give him a point there. And I think that comes out to nine and a half or ten and a half. Ten and a half. Ten and a half. And all right, so let's go back and look at this too, right? So 
I already said that the cash debt free cash flow, you could make a very convincing argument that it should be one. That brings it up to 11. And Brian, you just talked about how Glassdoor is, it's kind of a muted signal. It's not a negative thing. It's not a positive thing. It's muted because this is an international company. Mm -hmm. Right there, I just took it to 12. So, I mean, this is a, this is, this scores very well. It's not in the upper echelon, but it, it scores very well in the anti-fragile framework. I will admit, Brian, I usually don't care about TAM at all. I still don't totally, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, so let's just, let's just play with this for a second. If they stay inside South Korea and they probably won't, but let's say that they do. And they've already got 40%, maybe even more of, of the households that are using it. They're going to have to provide the bulk of everything, you know, to satisfy some growth investors' projections uh, for for what this company can do. That doesn't bother me very much, but I'm just throwing it out there because it sticks out. Sure, I think that that's 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 fair. Um, but overall, a 10.5 is a really good score. Yes, it is. Uh, anything over seven is bigger is big, right? Anything over seven makes it investable. Okay. If it's above 12. Then I ask myself why I don't own it. By the way, we're getting some wonderful comments here. Thank you all for those that are listening. Johnny Yang, Yang, Yang. Sorry, Johnny. Uh, I'm terrible with the pronunciation. Said they just announced they are expanding to Singapore. So this company oh. just reported earnings yesterday or last night. So they announced they are expanding to Singapore. That's very Which helpful to know. So they are limited. already. Yes. That seem, yeah. Oh yes, boy. All right. I'm a C limited shareholder. Fun. I better look out because let me tell you something. I don't know anybody who's offering what Coupang's offering. Yeah. And Patrick Song says Coupang beat on revenue and missed on earnings. So that's why the stock is falling today. They beat on revenue, but they missed on earnings. Do you care about that? Because that doesn't bother me one iota. I, I do. I care about that. And I don't I'll tell care you why. Because it's a way of showing how are they at managing expectations. And more importantly, this was their first earnings report as a publicly traded company, at least in the United States. And when you come out of the when you come out of the gate and you miss on your first earnings report, that set that that is a bad sign, uh, in my opinion. So you don't care about that. Uh, I certainly I, I do. Uh, so my system will will knock them uh, for that a little bit. Uh, and speaking of that, let's go over and take this through uh, my system. We can go through this uh, pretty darn uh, quickly. So the company is Coupang, C-P-A-N-G. Let's see what the score is. All right, start at the top. Financial resilience, uh, very strong balance sheet. Five out of five, that's as good as you can do. Gross margin, the gross margin here is very low, uh, 18% or so, and I don't know if it's rising. Uh, I will assume that it's 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 rising. Um, I will double check that though. If you could double check that, that, that would be great, yep, Brian. Gross margin. Um, um, I'm going to assume that it's going to be, especially with their rocket offering, but I'm assuming that it's rising. So it's low, but if it's on the way up, I will give them a point. Returns on capital here are negative, so that's a zero. Free cash flow is negative, so that's a zero. And earnings are negative, so that's a zero. Okay, let's talk about the moat. Uh, I will also give them some points uh, for the uh, for the network effect. I'll give them five out of fifteen for the network effect. I will give them some points for the switching costs. Once you are a coupon customer, clearly you stay around and you order more. There must be switching costs, and there's very much a durable cost advantage here. And given their given everything that's happening, I think their moat is getting wider. Uh, so my scoring system taps out at 20. I am giving them full credit. Yeah, their gross margins are expanding. They are expanding. Thank you. So they're still sub 20%, but they're on the way up, which makes sense given that they're, they launched that rocket, whatever, a rocket wow service. Okay. Potential optionality. I'm going to give them seven here. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, because this company, uh, oh, you gave them two and a half. Yeah. They started out as just delivery. They, they're clearly launching into new categories. No, I'm giving them seven. They're clearly launching into new categories. And can they succeed if they get into this travel thing? I'm not betting them against them. You know, um, I like how they talked about how they test them too. I just remembered that. Like how they can use their network. To, they can take an idea and rapidly test it and hopefully kill off like nine out of 10 ideas. Yeah. And then find that one and then just supercharge and it. And then scale it everywhere. 
Uh, great. Organic growth runway is going to be high. Are they the top dog and first mover uh, in, in their market? So this we didn't know. They did mention competitors. They did not call them out. Uh, if we had more time, this is something that I would want to go deeper on because I did not get a firm sense of their competition. Uh, are they taking market share? They, they are clearly growing rapidly, but I can't imagine this is the only e-commerce company in uh, in, in, in South Korea. Uh, so they are, they're at least a disruptor, uh, given, given how quickly they are growing. Uh, so I'll give them, I will give them three points on that, but I don't know the answer to that question. So that, that, that might be a, a score I'm not very confident on. Does this company have operating leverage ahead or the ability to raise, pr grow profits faster than revenue once they reach scale? Yes, very much so. Uh, are their customers expensive to onboard? Uh, if you could look up that for me, Brian, so I don't have to switch back. The way that I judge that is by looking at spending. Actually, they they didn't break it out. Yeah, they, they, just, they just said they operating together. expenses. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be hard to say. Uh, I'm going to guess that it's, yes, it is hard to get a customer on board, uh, but I don't know that for sure because this company did not break out its sales and marketing expense. But I'll give them a two for that um, because how many, if if this company was, no, I'm going to give it a three. If this company existed, would you tell your friends about it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to tell my wife about it when we're done with this. Yeah. So I can imagine that this company that is blanketed everywhere, that it's it's got a low customer acquisition cost. I don't know that for sure. That's just a pure gut feeling. Once they are on, are they dependent? Yes. Yes. If, yes. I mean, you that's are, their mission you, statement. Yes. Their yeah. mission statement is that we will become your crack. <laughs> exactly. Uh, is revenue recurring? Yes, it is. Does this company have pricing power? Could it raise prices? Yes. Yeah. I could think so. Yeah. Uh, is the founder involved? Yep. Does he own a lot of stock? Yep. Glassdoor ratings. Uh, they were good, but as we talked about before, they are kind of biased there. I do like that the CEO regularly called out, we and we, we are the third largest employer and we want to make this company a great place to work. So I'm not going to give them full credit, but I will give them a three. Uh, the mission statement to me was not simple, but it was definitely inspirational and optionable. And I agree that this is a mission-driven company, but I'm going to mm -hmm. give them two points for that. How has the stock done since it came public? Uh, it's lost money. It's lost to the market, so I'm giving them a zero. They are not buying back stock. They are not paying a rising dividend. They are not repaying debt. Uh, and they lost, they missed their expectations on their first one. So that's a zero, zero, zero. So that is a star of 74. Okay. Accounting irregularities, no. Customer concentration, no. Industry disruption, no. Outside forces, no. Big market loser, no. Binary event, no. Is dilution extreme? We don't know. They were diluting, but we don't know that that yet. Uh, I will knock off two points there and adjust that later once we have more data on stock-based compensation as a public company, because that changes uh, over time. Are they growing by acquisition? No. Uh, are the financials complicated? No. Antitrust concerns? No. Headquarter risk, headquarter concerns. So uh, while it is in a foreign market, I think that South Korea is a very low-risk Geography, with the sole exception being their neighbor to the north. Uh, the sole that, exception. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that is a that is a risk. Uh, so I'm going to knock off two points there. So while I'm very confident in South Korea as a stable, good place to be, that's a risk. That is a geopolitical risk for this company. And then currency. 100% of their currency is not in the United States. Uh, so you add that all up, and that is a 68. That could rapidly rise if they, if their stock starts to beat the market, if free cash flow and earnings uh, rise. So right now, Coupang is outside of my investable range, but I think there's a lot to like about this business. And that Let's is more, that's more of a reflection of the deficiencies in my checklist than it does say about the company itself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I was going to say, let's talk about where we are different because it got a pretty good score for me. It didn't get a bad score for you, but it's, it fell outside of your range. Uh, so can you just delineate real quick? What, what, what were the things that you were giving weight to that I might not have or things that I gave weight to that you didn't? Yeah. So one of the things that I like to see is how has a stock performed? 
-hmm. since IPO. I'm a big fan of adding to companies that have beaten the market and I want to see over a multi-year uh, period. Uh, the other thing is uh, I want to see how the company does with managing Wall Street's expectations. Uh, this company has only reported earnings once. So it, I, I give them four chance. I look at the last four quarters and say, do they beat, 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 beat? Mm -hmm. uh, this company missed. Uh, so I that's another four points that they take off of, of mine. And then they could also... Uh, I didn't know about the extreme dilution, the, the share count. I don't don't know about the customer acquisition. Uh, that was a guess. And they're also right on the precipice of becoming free cash flow and net income positive. That will be a major swing for this company. That that alone will be six points uh, yeah. that this company uh, gets. So while this is not technically in my investable range right now, this could be in a hurry. So if somebody came to me and said, I want to own Coupang, I would say, I understand why. Yep. I mean, and, that, that, that's my bottom line. And did they report yesterday or this morning? I believe so. I believe it was yesterday. Okay, good. So then we're not behind the 12% drop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not it, that it, we would. Nothing, nothing to do with us. Uh, yeah. Uh, is there anything? I'm just going to quickly look that up. So in the most recent report, uh, revenue, actually, I'll share that since, since we have it, uh, since it is so, so uh, fresh. Um, yep. So this is the most recent report. Revenue grew 74% or 63% on a constant currency basis. So currency helped them. Customer count grew 21% to 16 million. Total net revenues per active customer was up 44%. Look, that's okay. So let's just focus on that for a second because they are constrained. And by that, I just mean they're already in, a, it sounds like an enormous percentage of the households in South Korea. It's that net re revenues per active customer. That's that's where the real growth is gonna come from. But they still grew 21% to yes. 16 million. But if you're planning on holding this for like five years, five years from now, I mean, if they're still just in South Korea, they'll be lucky if they're getting double digits for that. Coupang was founded with a mission. Opening statement. Great job, Bam Suk Kim. Awesome job. Uh, yeah. It needs work. It, it needs work, but I, I like that you're a mission-driven uh, company. We're making meaningful progress. Okay, so revenue was up. Customers were up. Gross profit was up 70%. So their gross margin went down slightly. Their mm -hmm. net loss, their net loss was 300 million. But this is the first earnings report. Gross margin was 17.4% drop, increased investments to expand new offerings. Okay. Coupang. Coupang has offices. Their mission is right in there. I mean, it's right in there. I, about yeah, us. They, they know how to make it clear. Yes. Uh, balance sheet looks good. Long term debt was good. Yeah. Just. Operating general administrative. <laughs> Here are our costs. <laughs> they basically doubled. Yeah. Uh, so gross profit was eight hundred million. Yeah. So maybe on the maybe on the earnings call they said we're entering those things. So okay. Well, thank you all for joining us for another one. We got that right around the hour point. So my takeaway is Coupang is an interesting company, one that I am going to watch. It scored higher than I think both of us initially thought uh, going in. If I was going to do more research on this company, I would definitely want to dig into the competitive aspects. We did not get into that at all. Uh, but that is going to be a question that, that, that I have. We are getting some uh, feedback. Again, Patrick uh, Song, super helpful here, saying yeah. uh, Navier is their main competitor, uh, as well as G Market. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know about those companies. Uh, I don't know about them. Uh, there wasn't much in there about them, but that would be the thing to watch. But more importantly, this company does seem to have a moat. It does yes. seem to have customers that love it. It's founder-led. It's approaching profitability. Uh, and there's a lot to like about this business. And, and you, do you want me to be honest with you? The biggest takeaway I have, my fourth largest holding is C Limited. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried. I, I want to go <laughs> check this out. They're going into Singapore and they do all these things. Is C Limited going to be able to match that? Uh, I'm not selling anything, but I'm just saying that that's actually my biggest takeaway. This is going on my high interest list to research more about. And the fact that it's down so much, I mean, if you like the stock should make it that much more enticing. Yep. And the other thing, my, the other, my concern that I have, the other question that I have is this is a 50 
53 yes. billion dollar company how big is the opportunity and can they exceed outside of south korea can can they do it and again if they go into singapore is that a useful test case one yes it is two singapore is like this big so like two delivery centers can service the entire geography mm -hmm. uh can they expand it to other larger countries uh we don't know but Lots of boxes being checked with this one. I understand why it was so highly uh, upvoted. Well, thank you all for, for watching. Well, we hope you found this to be uh, educational and informative. As a reminder, none of it we said is uh, investment advice. Uh, do your own research. This is for entertainment and educational uh, purposes only. Highly recommend. You follow us on Twitter. I'm at Brian Feraldi. He's at TMF Stoffel. Uh, every week we post a, uh, a list of uh, stocks for us to cover, and we want you to vote. What stock should we cover next? We are we don't definitely get to interested. Choose. We don't get to choose. You choose for us. So thank you all for joining us. Brian, another good one down, and I will see you next week. All right. And thank you to everyone joining us and giving us your comments. It was very helpful. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.